nuclear devices come in all shapes and sizes, just like the lunatics who use them. Anyone who tells you that the threat of thermonuclear war is over is a fool, an enemy, or both. Hello and welcome to Let's Play Nuclear Strike, the last entry in Electronic Arts Strike series, which I enjoy quite a bit. Now, I've done the previous four games, so it was only a matter of time before, before I get to this one. Now, I am playing the PC version, I'm using a light wrapper to get it running under Windows XP. I'm also recording with fraps, so it's probably going to make the sound all staticky occasionally, so I have to splice in videos from several attempts. But that's life. Now, what else? Well, we have in the main menu here we have this small video screen in the corner, which will. I think it's pretty much all as video clips that aren't played full screen in the rest of the game anyway. And sometimes it seems like there, there's some uh, easter eggs going on there. Anyway, let's see our configuration options. For the chopper we can alter our weapons loadout. Balanced or Hypers or Hellfires or Chain Gun. I like to go with Balanced and Wingtip, Sidewinders, Fuel, Pods. ECM or nothing. Again, I prefer sidewinders. Controls, keyboard, mouse or joystick, or actually I'm using a gamepad. Volume. Ah, well, it's pretty weird how it goes. Ah, now this is a pretty good one. I mean, if I bump the sound effects level just one notch, it can easily drown out my own voice during gameplay. There's lots of explosions going on. <clears throat> and the volume doesn't seem to affect all the videos that the game plays, which is also weird. Now options, not much here, I'll stay with Tom's difficult level. We have easy or normal. Oh well, no hard difficulty. Uh, let's meet our motley crew again. Money. Money is just worthless paper unless it's backed by something. Freedom? Freedom is just a pretty idea unless it's backed by force. And that's what strikes about. Yeah, these are quite a bit shorter than the uh, introduction videos. Well, in uh, Soviet Strike. So now that I think back, I I think those were just sound files, so that explains something. You know, people used to say, what you don't know can't hurt you. But, not anymore. What you don't know can get you killed. See, knowledge is power and StrikeNet is our generator. I mean, it connects us to everything, everywhere, anytime. Winning and losing starts in the brains. That's why they call it intelligence. Hmm. Ah, now same old cast. Andrea. Perception of reality is as important as reality itself. You control perception. You control events. GBS controls perception. Strike controls reality. At least, At least that's, that's the way, the way it's, it's supposed, supposed to work. Uh, yeah, for some reason uh, there was a bit of graphical glitching there, but no big deal. It's already, already away. For some reason Andrea has said different hairstyle in this game, depending on the role she's acting in, and in my opinion that's a bit too on the nose finger pointing. Uh, I like to think it's just because the actress haven't had that short blonde hair at the moment, and they wanted to bring back that old blue look the news casting segments. Anyway, let's get started. Hey yo, big general! We got a hit on a reprocessing plant in Belarus, and the inventory list a missing plutonium pit from an SS missile. Mass and blast potential. 
or about 10 pounds of visual cereal, that's enough to rock a city. What data links we got? Interpol tracked it to Bangkok. Then? They lost it. Andrea! Nick Arnold was inserted into the jungles of Indocene on recon, but his signal's gone down. Suspects. My best guess is, it's Colonel Lamond. He sold out every intelligence agency that hired him. Lamond. I was afraid of this. Local resistance is led by one, Naja Hanna, survivor of the Colonel's killing pit, and one, fine soldier, you know what I'm saying? Indocene takes full priority. Commander, contact Nick Arnold and support Naja and the resistance. Okay, now, yeah, microphone is on. Now let's take a look at our briefing stuff here. Now, and also we have, um, we can change our volumes here and the recall option allows you to play again any messages you've gotten during the mission. But, uh, Let's leave uh, viewing this mission stuff at the start of the next video. And first, see what we have here. Enemies, Greyhound. That's called the Greyhound because it moves troops around fast. But two rockets will muzzle this puppy. Mm, that's simple enough. Gunboat. Pippers are as common as rubber ducks around here. But they're not bathtub tools. They can launch a grenade every four seconds. Hmm. Stuart. I, I wonder what that uh, wedge plow thing at the front is. I mean, armored vehicles aren't supposed to be ramming into other enemies. Enemy vehicles, are they? They were making these things before most of us were born. They're better at running away than fighting. So now that I think of it, I suppose that might be meant for clearing obstacles like fallen trees and stuff. Ooh, a French weapon of war. They are good at it. warfare as well, you know. These things dish it out better than they could take it, Chief. Whack them with the hellfire before they play their missile quartet. Otherwise, it could be your last dance. The bulldog. If this thing were heavier, it'd just sink into the bottom of the swamps and we could all go home. Hit it with the Hellfire Hydra one two punch and it's history. And dusters. They call them dusters because they're Major League Sky The good news is that their turrets turn as slow as a battleship. Nail them before you're pushing up bases. Uh, this is all pretty good. Advice. Hmm, personal carrier amphibious. What you see ain't necessarily what you get. Usually these troop toting tin cans are lightly armed, but beware, some might be packing Gatling guns. And next on the assets. Locals, which totes is more appears to be more about the quick ladder. Hey, if you find a quick ladder, you can rescue dudes twice as fast. Keep your eyes peeled. So it was. Fuel. The resistance has been helping us position fuel pods and hooches. So careful, you don't blow up the fuel when you break in. Yeah, just blow up the building above the fuel. That's not going to harm it in any way. Lamont takes killing seriously. Uses only the best ammo. This is what I call one-stop shop. Ah, good. No more inferior Soviet am ammunition. Landing zones. These drop-off landing zones will come in handy. You drop off the local, we repair your armor. Yep. Ah, now tool of trade. Weapon of choice and so on. Strikes Super Apache is the best hammer in our toolbox. First, learn the jink. It makes all the difference between being a live hero and a late. Second, check your wingtip configs. Standard load ain't for every roll. 
Um, unlike what he said, I do just fine with standard load for every role. Ah, now here we have another con vehicle you can control. They brought those back for this game. They call this thing Y Bot. That means monster. Problem was, these armor crocodiles chop the Pentagon's budget like they chewed up the enemy. Use it and have fun. And I do much prefer that camouflage coloring over the bright red fashion disaster we had in back in Jungle Strike. Huey. Another helicopter. Carries more stuff. He is sluggier, basically. Remember, this thing doesn't have smart armor. In fact, if it were any dumber, it could be a pro wrestler. But it's easy to fix with playing old rivets. Get it to an LZ and you can bolt it back together. Oh, I guess I should say small like more, more sluggish. Now I don't really know what that stuff was about. The Huey lacking smart armor. I mean, you can repair it just as easily with armor pickups and dropping off passengers. I mean, the only, only, only real difference regarding the armor is that it has a bit less of it than the Apache. Now, the advisor, Naja Hana. Her code name is Naja Hanna, Commander, and like the King Cobra she's named for, she's bold, beautiful, and lethal. She and her troops have been waging inconclusive skirmishes against Lamont for months. Recently, Lamont started rolling out weapons he shouldn't have been able to afford, and he's about to take the upper hand. Now, a bit of trivia. Naja is played by Native American actress Moon Bloodgood, who is best known today, I believe, for her role in Terminator Salvation. And according to Internet Movie Database, at least this game is her first on-screen role. Now home base, the Sea Shadow, which in reality was just one prototype, but it's appearing quite a bit in fiction. Home sweet home, Chief. The Shadow's stealthy, but if it stays in one spot too long, it's a sitting duck. We're keeping it mobile. Check for it on your map. I do have to question its stealthiness when uh, you have a helicopter sitting on top of it. Doesn't that kind of, kind of break that stealthy radar profile? And of course, the armor. If you ain't dead by now, smart armor is the reason. Keep your eyes peeled for armor crates. Winch them up and they'll make your gunship as good as new. Okay. And, well, the Y stuff is just the opening video for the mission again. But uh, who? Colonel Lamont. 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 Should he be Lamont, not Lamont? Lamont is diabolical. Not stupid, Commander. You're fighting on his turf. Make sure he doesn't set the terms. Plan your strikes carefully. You know what they say. If you only wound the devil, there's hell to pay. That's a, a rather interesting shift in storytelling in Soviet Strike. We were running around trying to figure out who the man behind everything was. But here we are told it right from the beginning. And we are in... Uh... The man got that serious firepower from somewhere. Now he's kicking some serious butt. He controls a badass fortress on the Red River and runs his patrol boats down the Delta. Those rearmed troops and heavy tanks have captured and fortified several villages. Lamont is out to crush all resistance. If he succeeds, he might as well own Indocene. Hmm. Even though they use fictional names, I think here. Yeah. Uh, just say we are at a big river delta. And the Mekong. The delta of the Mekong River in Vietnam is one of the largest in the world, so take that as you will. We've seeded the area with supplies and are setting up two LZs for backup. Recon the Delta, Commander. Find Nick. Assess the situation. Lamar has some smoke pits going. Can't break through the clutter. Help me out, Commander. I wonder if that voice cutting off was supposed to be a, a dramatic demonstration of how the clutter is affecting communications as well. Anyway, 
next we next video we'll get to actual mission and gameplay.